Good morning, my friends. How are you, Lionhearts? Did you say hi to Jeffrey yet? Okay, thanks. All right, how are you guys today? Today is going to be a great day. I worked all day yesterday. Actually, it turned out to be really great because uh, it was no um, star-studded event or anything, but um, at the end of the night, um, the manager who sends out all the work requests actually came up to me and said, hey, I've got nothing but um, fantastic reviews from all your work, so you're going to be getting a lot of shifts sent your way if you want them. And I was like, yeah, definitely. So um, what I mentioned to him last night, it was actually something that kind of was a discovery to me yesterday about working these catering jobs. I said, you know, the reason I started doing it was because it's a, you can make a lot of money um, in just one night of work. And I was like, hey, I can just, you know, suck it up and, um, you know, to make however much I need for the week, sometimes I can make it in one night. I can just suck it up and put up with whatever. But what it dawned on me last night was what I really, I think I get out of it the most is, especially with the companies I'm working with now, they actually go to kind of far away places. They have deals with the event, uh, the venues and stuff like that that actually get to go to cities and drive through cities that I have never been to before and they actually give me a lot of vlog ideas. I actually got three or four just driving up to Ojai yesterday so um, I, I really look forward to that and I love seeing the scenery so um, that's the one good thing I think or the one thing I never really thought of but it, it's um, it's kind of a bright side to doing those jobs. But anyway beyond that let's get on to today. Today I wanted to do a very special vlog. Um, today's vlog is actually about somebody that I think everybody loves. She not only is beloved for all of her contributions to television and cinema, and there are many. Um, some of maybe the most memorable roles in all of film history were with her. And she also had a very famous daughter. But what we want to concentrate on today is we're going to go see the house of Debbie Reynolds. And one of the things that Debbie Reynolds did for the film community that I don't think she gets enough credit for, beyond her work on the screen, it's actually what she did behind the scenes that I think is worth pointing out today. So today, Debbie Reynolds, this is all about you. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And that whack, that was all jaw over there. You just heard all that blah, 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 blah. That was jaw. So jaw's going with us too. Well, right now we're actually driving to Silver Lake. I'm taking jaw for a little adventure. We're gonna get some exercise together. Shakespeare Bridge. Well, here's pretty much a whole history of the water system here. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it's all based off the LA River. Wow, nice style. There's the reservoir. Look at all the bones in the yard. That scarecrow up there. Oh, that is killer. Look at that big spider web. It takes up the entire front yard. That is awesome. I want to show you guys something. I don't know if you can see it from here, but this little house here in the front, right there, there's actually um, TV screens in there, two of them, and it says Happy Halloween. Here, let's take a look. I mean, I can see it from across the street. Yeah, you can kind of see it. There you go. Back to our trail. And of course, these are all over the place out here. And they have these kind of signs every every once in a while along the path. You'll see these kind of letting you know what's indigenous out here or what you'll possibly see when you're out here. And they have one of these little like rolly doodads. You see that? You can kind of check out what's out here as well on there. Part of the reason that I actually wanted to come here today is because halfway around the track or halfway around the reservoir, they actually have a dog park that you can pop in. And it's two separate parks, like one for smaller dogs and one for bigger dogs. So um, assuming they're still there, um, we'll go over there. And there's actually a basketball court right next to it also that I used to play basketball at. There's one of those Laurel and Hardy type staircases that are all over Silver Lake. Do you see that right there in the center? Right by that light pole that goes up there. 
That one's great. I really like how different this one is. And then this one over here, it's kind of castle, kind of Moorish. I'm almost positive that's the same model of car that Ted Danson and Howie Mandel ride around in in a fine mess. I think theirs was yellow. That's the one that gets shot in the back with a shotgun, but I think that's the same model of car. Here's a bit of a different view of the reservoir. There's that little building right there I was trying to show you in that last shot. We're gonna go into this little park for a little bit and sit down. It's been kind of hot and sunny out today, so since he's all black, I don't want him to overheat, so I'm just giving him some time to chill out in the shade, and then we'll continue. We stopped in that park because there was a lady with her two dogs and Java's playing with them for a little bit and then she said, oh yeah, we just ignore the signs and then I looked up and there were like four signs right above her head that said no dogs allowed, so I said, yeah, I know they like to write tickets around here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm noticing now more than ever these signs that say no dogs allowed pretty much everywhere around here. Here's the uh, basketball park and then right next to it over here is the uh, dog park straight up there. There we go. There's the little dog park. And then right through the fence on the other side is the big dogs, dog park. He's all good, he's over there sniffing butts. Look at the trash can, it has the mosaic of the little dog and it says puppy love. Classic street name, just classic. I don't actually recall how far it is all the way around, but I think it's somewhere between two and three miles. I looked it up one time. Or maybe it's just a mile and a half, I forget. I remember I used to do it twice a day, so. That tree right there kind of looks like a bonsai tree from the back of Daniel's Gi on Karate Kid. Some pretty cool little art murals along the side. This is a pretty cool view. We actually started this whole trail on that side over there. And then they have this great patch of green grass over here, and yet no dogs. No dogs allowed. You always see people out here doing yoga. We're pretty close, we're almost done. Look how different these two houses are. This one, compared to this block looking one, it's all wood stained and it's indented and very unique. And right down in here is actually a little, uh, like a daycare nursery during the week, like a day camp. See, here it is, the little neighborhood nursery school. Pretty nice. Pretty nice little place. It's been here for a while. And straight ahead of us, right up here at this corner is where we started, so we're almost done. I know he's happy, he's gassed. Does that sign say, Smash the Patriarchy? Sure does. I saw this as I was driving by and I just had to stop. My fascination with eyeballs plus just Halloween and everything. I wonder if it lights up. I wonder if those eyeballs somehow light Well, there's some lights down here. I may have to come back here one of these nights and do a night vlog before this stuff gets taken down and check it out. Well, we're on our way to Beverly Hills now and we're gonna go see one of the earliest homes of Debbie Reynolds Carrie Fisher and Todd Fisher. 77 Sunset Strip. Well, we're here, Lionhearts. Well, we're actually in the neighborhood, and this is the house that Debbie Reynolds lived in when she did what I kind of alluded to earlier. In 1970, MGM basically liquidated all of its assets, all of its costumes, props, wardrobe, everything. Debbie Reynolds went to that auction and bought almost a million dollars worth of things. And what she got was just absolutely amazing. Now her whole purpose for this was actually, she wanted to make sure that this great history, this great Hollywood memorabilia wouldn't be separated and it wouldn't end up in a, um, a wardrobe fitting room or um, you know a prop house or something. Um, so she actually ended up buying up lots and lots, I mean literally, lots from movies. They would put all the costumes from one movie in a lot and she would buy that, she would buy big props. And she ended up amassing this collection and kept it all the way up until 2011. Now being a massive movie fan herself, 
this was not a selfish venture. This was literally to keep it all together so that everyone in the future could enjoy it. And she actually bought this, um, as I understand it, to originally be a donation to the uh, academy. And she was hoping that they would start a museum to house all of this. And then they roundly rejected her uh, multiple times. So eventually she would take this um, massive 5,000 piece collection and start up her own museum in a casino in Las Vegas for a while. Uh, but she, while she lived here, her husband Harry Carl had actually stolen a lot of her money. So at, at a time it just became, um, the casino was going down. Debbie's collection was actually considered the greatest movie collection in history. Like I said, 5,000 pieces, 3,000 of that being uh, wardrobe. She had Charlton Heston's Ben-Hur wardrobe. She had Citizen Kane, uh, the, uh, the fur coat that he wore in Citizen Kane, Orson Welles. She had Judy Garland's dress from The Wizard of Oz. She had Marilyn Monroe's white dress from Seven Year Itch. She had um, the original camera that Star Wars was filmed on. She had both her pink dress that she popped out of the cake in um, uh, Singing in the Rain, as well as the purple dress that she danced with Gene Kelly in. She had Charlie Chaplin's bowler. She had Douglas Fairbanks' uh, wardrobe from Taming of the Shrew. And she had Valentino's blood and sand outfit, just to name a few. Also, the pride and joy of her collection was that she was a gigantic Judy Garland fan and she actually had two pairs of the red ruby slippers from Wizard of Oz. Now there's actually said to have been four or five pair, um, some for distant shots and for, you know, for her to walk and to take wear and tear. There was a backup pair, there was a pair for her stand-in, um, and then there was a prototype pair that had the kind of iron sheet curled toes. Um, that were also ruby and really the only proof of this is that the uh, inside of the shoe has Judy Garland's name on it as well as there's a test photo of her wearing one of those shoes with one of the regular shoes and um, she owned not only that pair but she also owned the ruby slippers that were used for all the close-up shots in Wizard of Oz. Now what's great is that before this gate was here there was actually a picture of Debbie out here walking, Carrie and Todd Fisher, Todd in the stroller, and they were standing right here. And this was the house. Now what's great is that they also, um, Debbie Reynolds was a, a big fan of um, her family um, photos and family home movies. So she actually had those bronze later on in life and um, a lot of those home movies that you can find on YouTube and on Debbie's own Facebook page were actually taken here. Um, there's one I saw of Todd riding like a motorbike with Carrie sitting um, the opposite way on the back. Now I always love Debbie Reynolds. I, you know, of course, Singing in the Rain and the unsinkable uh, Molly Brown, but you know, what really stands out in my mind is if you've ever seen Albert Brooks' movie Mother, where Debbie Reynolds plays his mother, that really, I, I love that movie when it came out, and that just reminded me how great she was all the way through her entire career, as well as extremely giving. She was, um, when, when she passed away, um, her son, as we most of us probably already know, Carrie Fisher and Debbie died, you know, extremely close apart, like one day apart. And uh, when they passed away, Todd decided to um, auction off a lot of the memorabilia. Uh, but before he did, he allowed um, some movie cameras to come in and actually film the inside of both of their homes. And he actually said they would have wanted that. They would have wanted all the fans to be able to see the inside of their homes. You gotta hand it to her. What a great gesture, you know, to, to see the importance of the film history and then to invest so much of your money at that time into all those pieces, 5,000 pieces. And in fact, even when the museum, the Debbie Reynolds Museum, I think it was called the Debbie Reynolds Hollywood Museum, even when that wasn't open, she had a full on warehouse where everything was categorized. You could go in there and type in any actor's name and they had it categorized where the prop was, what it was from. Um, they said there was actually a couple of hundred costumes that they were never able to figure out where exactly they were um, used in. And this was the house.
that would have been Debbie Reynolds, Carrie Fisher, and Todd. And the uh, footage I saw of them riding the motorbike was actually right, this has kind of a U shape, and it's actually them riding down this part right here. I'm guessing Carrie would have been about 13 maybe. Pretty cool. Gotta love it. Debbie Reynolds, what a sweet lady. Amongst her other amazing collectibles, she actually also had the uh, headdress that Elizabeth Taylor wore in Cleopatra. She had many of Mary Pickford's um, dresses. She had, let's see what else. Um, a handful of the cars and props from movie sets. I couldn't believe that, that she actually had bought like, I think it was the Mutiny on the Bounty ship, I believe. Now you can definitely tell that the trees in the background, like the trees right over here are not the same anymore, but when the light's shining right there, like the way the sun comes in, it looks like a walkway, and that was what was behind there. So that photo, Debbie would have been standing right about there. Now later on in life, and then all the way till the end of their lives, Debbie and Carrie actually lived on the same property. They had houses right next to each other with a walkway that went from Carrie's house, which was a little bit higher up on a hill, and it would you could just walk right down to Debbie's house. And then I was also able to actually find a picture that Debbie herself had posted online of her on a swing in the backyard with her kids. And I'll post that right here. There's the whiskey go go. And the Viper Room. Well, I had to venture into Ralph's to get Jaw some food. This is a weird escalator. It's like it goes down a ramped escalator. Because you can actually see, you can actually bring your carts on there as well. Whee! Who needs Disneyland? Ah, here we go, bingo. Oh, classic. Santa beard hats and frosty hats. Those are pretty cool, actually. I love the goofiness factor. Oh man, these pine cones smell amazing. Rosemary topiary. Well, I got his food and a green juice for me. We should be set for a couple of days. Check it out, Fat Sal's is Fat Sal's again. Well, good evening, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing Carrie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds house. And if you didn't know the story of Debbie Reynolds um, keeping that memorabilia together for all these years, I hope that you enjoyed hearing about that for the first time. I want to thank Nina Lindberg and Melissa Baldwin for becoming my newest Patreons. And uh, just a reminder, if you become a Patreon this month in November, and donate uh, $3 or more, I'm gonna be sending out Christmas cards to everyone. So if you want a Christmas card from me, there you go. Um, I think I have a pretty good vlog coming tomorrow. I tentatively have plans for something that I've wanted to do for a while and uh, I met somebody who really wants to do it with me so I think we're gonna do it tomorrow. So I probably shouldn't tease you in case it doesn't happen but that's the best way to get you to come back, right? Have a great night. From your old pal Jordan the Lion, John, Jeffrey, Goodbye.